want to remind you that this won't be perfect. We might encounter some interruptions such as internet issues, lags, and background noises. Additionally, the topic regarding the Chapter 3 lessons needs a very long patience, so please bear with us and we hope that you'll learn something. Disclaimer for everyone, we are not professionals when it comes to this kind of topics, but we promise that we'll try our best to provide you right information and knowledge. Good day! Welcome to the side talk. We are now in the chapter 3 of our lesson, and today, we will discuss to you the following. What is a volcano and its volcanic hazards with two famous volcanoes in the Philippines, Mayon Volcano and Mount Pinatubo. So sit back, relax, and listen. Keep on watching! I'm Jonna from Rock Crimson Heights and I am here to discuss the lesson on what is a volcano. Before we start, let us define some terms that you will encounter. First, let us define what volcano is. Volcanoes are natural opening in the Earth's surface where molten rocks, smoke, gases, and ashes are ejected. Have you seen Mayan Volcano located in Albay, Bicol, Philippines? Did you know that Mayan Volcano is one of the world's most active volcano and it is very popular because of its perfect cone? Volcano has three basic parts, namely the base, the slope, and the summit or the crater. Speaking of crater, crater is a funnel-shaped depression at the top of a volcano formed as a result of explosive eruption. It is the mouth or the opening of the volcano. It is a volcanic crater that is formed when a part of the wall of the crater collapses following an explosive eruption. A caldera collapse is usually triggered by emptying of magma chamber beneath the following as the result of a large volcanic eruption. When we say magma, it is a hot fluid or semi-fluid material below or within the Earth's crust that is usually made from the molten rocks inside the Earth. When the magma ejected out of a volcano, it is now called lava. Lava is an Italian word which means to slide, which is what molten rocks does once it reaches the surface. Now let us proceed to the different types of volcano. Volcano can be classified according to its shape and eruption. Let us first the types of volcano according to its shape. The first type is shield volcano. This is formed by the accumulation of lava oozes out from the volcano. Since non-viscous lava can flow freely, a broad, slightly doomed structure that resembles a warrior's shield is formed. That is why it is called shield volcano because it looks like a warrior's shield. Example is Mauna Loa in Hawaii. The second type is what we call cinder cone volcano. This is built from ejected lava fragments. They have a steep slope, wide crater, and is most abundant of the three major volcanoes. It is also known as scoria cone. Example is Mount Parikutin in Mexico. As you can see, it has a steep slope and it has a wide crater that are characteristics of a cinder cone volcano. Lastly, we have Composite Volcano. It is also known as Stratovolcano. It this is a large, nearly perfect slope structure formed from the alternate solidification of both lava and pyroclastic deposits. According to volcanologists or the people who study about volcanoes, some of the Earth's grandest mountains are composite or stratovolcano. One good example is our very own Mayon Volcano. And those are the three types of volcano according to its shape. Again, we have shield volcano that is broad and resembles or a warrior shield. Cinder cone volcano also known as scoria cone and it has white craters. Composite volcano or also known as strata volcano with nearly perfect slope structure. But volcanoes have different types. It is because the process of magma formation is different at each type of plate boundary. Therefore, the composition of magma differs in each tectonic setting. Now, let us go to the different types of volcano according to its eruption. The first one is phreatic. It is a stream driven eruption as the hot rocks come in contact with water. It is also known as hydrothermal. Phreatic eruption is the type of eruption that happens at the Al Volcano last January 12, 2020. Next, we have phreatomagmatic. It is a violent eruption due to the contact between water and magma. Unlike phreatic, that happens because hot rocks come in contact with water. Phreatomagmatic eruption happens if there is interaction between water and magma, resulting to a violent fine ash eruption. The third is Strombolian. It is a period big to violent eruption characterized by fountain lava. As shown in your screen right now, it is a fountain lava. The fourth one is what we call volcano. 
It is characterized by tall eruption that reach up to 20 km high with pyroclastic flow and asphalt tephra. Again, it is characterized as tall eruption. Lastly, we have Plinia. It is excessively explosive type of eruption of gas and pyroclastics. It is intensively violent kind of eruption that happens to Mount Pinatubo year 1991. Again, the five types of volcanic eruption are Priatic or the stream-driven eruption that happens between the contact of rocks with water. Priato magmatic that happens between the eruption of magma and water resulting to violent fine ash eruption. Strombolian eruption are characterized as fountain lava. Vulcanian characterized by tall eruption. And Trinian as the most excessively explosive type of eruption. Philippines is situated or part of the Pacific Ring of Fire which characterized by frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Most active volcanoes on Earth is located in the circumference of Pacific Ring of Fire. And again, Philippines is included. Did you know that our country has more than 100 volcanoes as of 2013? Making us known as the home of many volcanoes. There are several ways by which volcano can be classified. So now, let's move on to the classification of volcano. Let us have the first classification. It is called active volcano. An active volcano has at least one record of eruption during the past 10,000 years, meaning it had erupted and had show any volcanic activity. An active volcano might be erupting or dormant. When we say dormant, it is an active volcano that is not erupting but supposed to erupt again. And according to PVOX, there are 24 active volcanoes in the country. And I have listed the 24 active volcanoes in the Philippines and their location. Take a look of these volcanoes. On the other hand, we can also classify volcanoes as inactive volcanoes. They are also called instinct or sleeping volcanoes. It is one that could erupt but has not erupted for more than 10,000 years. They are expected that they erupt again at some point despite being dormant for thousands of years. Inactive does not necessarily indicate that the volcano will not erupt again. One example is Mount Pinatubo. Did you know that before, Mount Pinatubo was an inactive volcano? However, it erupted in year 1991. Therefore, an inactive volcano or instinct volcano can still be an active volcano. Next question is, how are volcanoes formed? Magma can rise when pieces of Earth's crust, called tectonic plates, slowly move away from each other. Magma also rises when the tectonic plates move toward each other. A final wave that magma rises is over hot spots. Hot spots are exactly what they sound like, or hot areas inside the earth. When we say hot spot, these are fixed places within the mantle or oceanic plate sphere where rocks melt to generate magma. When a hot spot is situated in the oceanic plate sphere, a class of volcanoes known as shield volcanoes is built. These are constructed on the deep ocean floor and may be built high enough to rise above sea level as volcanic islands. So now, let's discuss the signs of an impending volcanic eruption. First, increased steaming activity, change in color of steam emission from white to gray due to entrained ash. Second, increase in the frequency of volcanic waves with rumbling sounds, occurrence of volcanic tremors. Third, increase the temperature of hot springs, wells like Bulusan and Candaon, and crater lake like Taal, near the volcano. Localized landslides, rock falls and landslides from summit area which not attributable to heavy rains. And lastly, crater glow due to presence of magma at or near the crater. After we discuss the lesson about volcanoes, now let us have a short activities. Activity 1, identify the following volcanoes if it is shield volcanoes, intercone volcano, or composite volcano. Number 1, this is Mount St. Helens in Washington. What type of volcano is this? Is it shield, intercone, or composite volcano? Number 2, this is the beautiful Mount Fuji in Japan. What do you think is this type of volcano?
Number 3, this is the Mauna Kea in Hawaii. What type of volcano is this? Activity 2, identify the word being described by the following statements and arrange the jumbled letters. Number 1, these are natural opening in the Earth's surface where molten rocks, smoke, gases, and ashes are ejected. Number 2, it is a funnel-shaped depression at the top of a volcano formed as a result of explosive eruption. Number 3, it is a volcanic crater that is formed when a part of the wall of the crater collapses following an explosive eruption. Number 4, it is the molten rocks inside the Earth. Number 5, it is the magma that has been ejected out of a volcano. Number 6, it is the stream driving eruption as the hot rocks come in contact with water. Number 7, it is an active volcano that is not erupting but supposed to erupt again. Number 8, also known as a stratovolcano. This is large, nearly perfect structure formed from the alternate solidification of both lava and pyroclastic deposits. Number 9, it is a period weak to violent eruption characterized by fountain lava. And number 10, it is also referred to as the Circumpacific Belt. So now, let us check your answers. Wrong spelling is wrong. Activity 1, number 1, cinder cone volcano. Number 2, composite volcano. Number 3, shield volcano. And for activity 2, number 1, volcano. Number 2, crater. Number 3, caldera. Number 4, magma. Number 5, lava. Number 6, phreatic. Number 7, dormant volcano. Number 8, composite volcano. Number 9, strombolian. And number 10, ring of fire. And that's all about the volcanoes. And here is Nika Guerra and Jonah Marie Mancino to discuss the volcanic hazards. Hi, this is Jonah Marie Mancino from the Princeton Heights. Are you already bored or burning in your chair? Wait, here's a warning. Volcanoes produce a variety of others. In a volcanic Hazard refers to any potentially dangerous volcanic process that puts human lives, livelihoods, or infrastructure at risk of harm within a given period of time. To know more, let's get deeper. The first one is lava flows. Lava flows are flows of magma extruded into the surface of a volcano. In general, it is rare for lava to cause the direct loss of life because it is usually flows slowly, allowing sufficient time for people to be evacuated. However, it does destroy everything in its path by a combination of burying, crushing, covering, and burning. Remember, lava can burn. Lava can bury. Once the area affected by the lava flows, it will solidify, then rendered useless and will never ever be useful for years. Pyroclastic flow. Pyroclastic flow is not just a volcanic eruption. Unlike the lava flow, it can wipe out the whole city and buildings, killing thousands. It is extremely hazardous and destructive type of volcanic activity. It is made of ash, rocks, and poisonous hot gases that can burn and suffocate people with these materials. The next one we have is gas emissions. Various gases can be emitted before, during, or after an eruptive event and can cause various health hazards locally, but also have the potential to affect the climate globally. The main five gases that pose a threat to health are carbon dioxide, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen sulfide, and 
Sulfur dioxide. Why gas emission is dangerous. Volcanic gases are particularly hazardous as they cannot be seen and because they are denser than ambient air. People can be exposed to harmful volcanic gases by breathing them in and through contact with the skin and eyes. The health effects range from mild to serious and occasionally deadly exposures. After exposures, people may report difficulty in breathing and itchy skin. The next one is we have ash fall or tephrafall. The fine grained nature of volcanic particles that fall out from the plumes of a volcanic eruption. The ash fall distribution means it is easily transported by winds to distance of hundreds to thousands of kilometers away from a volcano. Ash fall and tephrafall hazards. Ash is made up of small, sharp, angular fragments of glass and other volcanic materials due to its abrasive nature. Volcanic ash can cause damage to aircraft. While during an eruption, most tephra will fall to the ground around the volcano. This can load buildings roofs and obscure world markings making travel difficult. The loading of tephra on leaves can lead to the burial of plants or stripping of branches from trees resulting in a significant impact in the agriculture. Lahar. Lahar is a type of volcanic mad flow that made up of volcanic debris and hot or cold water. Debris avalanche or volcanic landslide. It is a massive collapse of a volcano. It is usually triggered by an earthquake or volcanic eruption. The next volcanic hazard is tsunamis. Tsunamis form when water ready in the lake of the sea is displaced. On volcanoes, this can occur by a number of mechanisms. For example, a submarine eruption, collapse of part of vol a volcanic edifice, entrance of lahars or pyroclastic density currents into surrounding water. BAM! Ballistic projectiles are volcanoes materials directly ejected from the volcanoes vents with force and trajectory. There you have it! You already know the volcanic hazards during volcanic activity. Scientists may help you determine the disaster measures through findings and seismic activities, but the signs of volcanic eruption is uncertain. What should you do to handle such situation? Now, let's discuss how would you prepare and manage disasters to protect your family. Ready your pen and make sure to follow the items on this list. Number 1. Make a detailed emergency plan. Prepare your family in emergency plan. Ensure everybody knows the roads for evacuating the area. Identify the meeting place, safe zones, and evacuation center in case of emergency. Stay away from rivers or streams that may carry mud or debris flow. Number 2. Arrange an emergency supply kit. Prepare the things needed beforehand. First and most important, water for drinking and sanitation. Food. At least 3 days non-perishable food. A battery powered devices and backup batteries for contact purposes. You also need first aid kit, whistle, mask, map, plastic sheet for shelter purposes. Number 3. Store important documents in waterproof container or reusable plastic bag. These documents include birth certificates, medical records, passports, and identification card among others. Make sure to bring these documents when you evacuate. Number 4. Develop a communication mechanism. In case of family members are not together, plan ahead of time of who to contact and where to meet. It is ideal that every family member has a handheld devices such as smartphones for easy communication. Number 5. Monitor news updates and coordinate with local authorities. Always check the news to become more informed on the next actions that you will take. 
also coordinate with your respective Barangay Disaster Coordinating Council and other local authorities in case there are plans for evacuation. Number 6. Strengthen the Roof of House In case of an ash fall and you are inside the house, make sure that your roofs have no holes or damages left. Also, ensure that there are no open spaces or the walls where ash can come inside the house. Now, it's time for an activity entitled, The Code, The Code. Hello, fellas. Mrs. Vulcan requested your help to deliver a message to Mr. Sismo about the current situation of a volcanic disaster. In order to help her, there are a series of pictures to figure out what word those pictures combine to make. Find a hidden word. Be careful. Decode the code. Number one, it is extremely hazardous and destructive. Number two, a volcanic particles that fall out from the plumes of a volcanic eruption. Number three, it is usually flows slowly, allowing sufficient time for people to be evacuated. Number four, Another term for debris avalanche. Lastly, number five, a human body system that is greatly affected by volcanic gases. You've made it! Congratulations! You've completed your mission. Number one, pyroclastic. Number two, tephra. Number three, lava. Number four, landslide. And lastly, Number five, respiratory. Thanks for watching. It's time to wrap up in volcanic hazards. But wait, hold on. It seems that we're not done yet in this survival episode. Will you manage to survive those volcanic hazards? Where is the safest place to find a shelter? What can you wear to help you survive? Here is Mika Guerra to help you discuss those procedures. Good afternoon everyone, I am Mika Aguera, Great Rock Stem from the Crimson Heights. In today's video, I am going to discuss the first evacuation procedures, second during a, during a volcanic eruption, following by essential items to stack before an ash fall, actions to be taken in preparedness, what to do if a volcanic ash is falling, mud flow, microplastic, and lava flows. In turn is disaster recovery, following by assessment and mapping of risk hazard, strengthening and structure system, public awareness, education, and training. So the first topic that I will discuss is the evacuation procedure. So during a volcanic activity, the atmosphere is full of toxic chemical and ashes, so it would be hazardous for our health. However, if you stay at home to avoid any respiratory problems and skin irritation. However, again, if you are in hazardous zone, staying at home will put, will put you at a high risk. Continuous ash flow when accumulated can destroy roofs. When the, when the authorities have ordered an evacuation, immediately follow their instructions and do not hesitate to evacuate. So as you prepare to evacuate, keep in mind the following. Revisit your emergency plan that you have developed and double check the content of your emergency kit. Stay updated for news by checking out the TV, radio, or internet. Be alert on warning signals and announcement from local authorities. Fill containers with clean water. As for washing, for drinking water, make sure that the containers used are with covers and scaled. The last is plan ahead to take pets with you, but be aware that some evacuation camps cannot accept animals. So, earlier we have to keep in mind the following. Now we have follow this following. First is take only essential items with you, including the emergency supply kits you have prepared, and keep track of your belongings. Second, unplug all appliances and electrical devices, turn off the gas and water meter. Third, follow the designated evacuation routes and expert heavy traffic and delays as others also conduct evacuation procedures. The second topic is during volcanic eruptions. 
Volcanic explosions are now ongoing. You should already be on the safe zone or evacuation camps as this happened. But what if you are caught outdoors or trapped indoors? Are you guys will panic? So there are some of the volcanic hazards and the things you should do to mitigate the risk. The first one is the essential items to stock before an ash fall. That's mask and eye protection. Enough drinking water for at least 72 hours, one gallon, three to four liters per person per day. Enough non-perishable food for at least 72 hours for family and pets. Plastic wrap to keep ash out of electronics. If available, a battery, a ba a battery operated radio and extra batteries. Lanterns or torches, flashlight, and extra batteries. If cold, extra wood for a fireplace or stove. If cold, extra blankets and warm clothing. Extra sacks of medication for both family and pets. First aid kit, cleaning supplies such as a broom, vacuum cleaner with spare bags and filters, and a shovel. A small amount of money, a source as such as ATMs and banks may not be operating. Consider that you could be stuck in your vehicle, so store emergency supplies in your vehicle too. Second is action to be taken in prepared nest. Close doors and windows, place damp towels or door, tree holds and other drop sources, take draughty windows, protect sensitive electronic and do not uncover until the environment is totally ash free. Disconnect drain pipes, downspot from gutters to stop drains clogging but allow ash and water to empty the gutters onto the ground. If you are if you use um if you use a rainwater collection system for your water supply, disconnect the tank prior to ash falling. If you have chronic bronchi bron bronchitis, empesima or asthma, stay inside and avoid an unnecessary exposure to the ash. Ensure livestock have clean food and water. If you have children, know your school's emergency plan and have indoor games and activities ready. Third or the last is what to do if volcanic ash is falling. Don't panic, stay calm, stay indoors. If outside, seek shelters. Use a mask, handkerchief, or cloth over your nose and mouth. If warning is given before ashfall starts, go home from work. If at work when ashfall starts, stay indoors until the, a the ash has settled. Do not tie up home lines with non-emergency calls. Listen to your local radio for information on the eruptions and clean up plants. Do not wear contact lenses as this will result in curl embrasion. If there is ash in your water, let it settle and then use the clear water. If there is a lot of ash in the water supply, do not use your dishwasher or washing machine. Water contaminated by ash will usually make drinking water uninflatable before it presents a health risk. You may eat vegetables from the garden but wash them. Mud flow, microplastic, and lava flows. Stay away from the restricted zone identified by local authorities. Avoid river valley and low-lying areas. Do not watch an erupting volcano up closed. If you see the water level of stream rising, then quickly move to higher ground. If the mud flow is approaching a bridge, then away from the bridge. Be observant of warning sign on the road. Avoid the path of molten lava flow. Avoid weak structures, including the fresh, which might have been formed, solidifying or of lava during earlier discharge. Do not stand on such structures, which, which unstable and could slide. The third topic is disaster recovery. Do not go near the eruptions area and stay away from areas with volcanic ash falls. Clear heavy ash from flat or log pitch roofs in rain gutters. Event after the eruptions, fine ashes can be blown by the wind so it is important to cover your mouth and nose with a face mask. Wear goggles to protect your eyes and keep wear skin covered to avoid irritations. Clear roofs of asphalt. Asphalt is very heavy and can cause buildings to collapse. Avoid driving during a heavy asphalt. Driving will stir up more ash than can plug engine.
So the first one is assessment and mapping of risk and hazard. There are several assessment and mo monitoring of hazards needed to actually identify prevention measures. The knowledge of the eruption's history of a volcanic is fundamental to characterize its past and present, behavior and the assets, the associated hazard, a successful hazard assessment combines the knowledge and understanding of volcanic history with the development of empirical models and probabilities techniques. So here is the hazard map. Hazard map show the possibility of impacts based from the certain intensity of volcanic activity. Meanwhile, risk maps highlight the hot spot where exposure to risk are synthesis map can be developed so people can easily understand complex information the second one is a strengthening and structure system buildings should be more resistant against disaster moreover in infrastructure such as roads and bridges which serve as major lifelines building structure should be designed in a way that they can withstand earthquakes caused by volcanic eruptions also also, bridges should be included on statistic classifications based on how important they are for access. The third one is the public awareness, educations, and training. The people from various sectors must be trained, educated, and actively involved. So if any disasters happen, they are trained well, educated well, so they can survive. And here, Miss Nika Maluba to discuss the next topic. There are around 300 volcanoes in the Philippines and 24 of them are active. At this point, we will tackle one of the most famous volcanoes in our country, the Mayon Volcano or also called as Mount Mayon. At around 2,462 meter high, this volcano is situated in Nagbay, a province in the Bicol region which lies in the southeastern section of the country. It's a composite volcano and one of the most interesting facts about this volcano is it has erupted 50 times in the past decades making it one of the most active volcanoes in the country. Although Mayon poses several threats to its nearby communities, Mayon is more admired than feared. It has drawn visitors because of its perfect cone shape, which is unmatched anywhere else in the world. For now, let's take a brief look at Mayon's history of eruptions. There are variations on how Mayon has erupted through time. First one is Volcanion. Several observations claim that eruptions of Mayon were often like this. An, instant, an intense explosion with sudden releasing gases. Volcanion is an explosive type of volcanic eruption that occurs when the pressure of entrapped gases in relatively viscous magma becomes sufficient to blow off the overlying crust of solidified lava. This characterization of Mayon's eruption undoubtedly ravaged the local communities. The second one is Stromboyan. Stromboyan is a quiet emission of lava. It is one of the least violent of the explosive eruptions, although they can still be dangerous if bombs or lava flow reach inhabited areas. This characterization of Mayan's eruption was manifested in the 1978. And lastly, Plinian. Plinian is an extremely intense explosion, the largest and most violent eruption claiming the lives of around 1,200 people. This was the eruption that buried the Kagsawa Church because of lava flows. In February 1993, Mayon's eruption has generated pyroclastic flows that killed around 78 farmers working on the slopes and displaced 60,000 people. Meanwhile, it was in February 2000 when Mayon emitted lava and molten rocks that reached more than 3,000 meters high. There were no casualties reported in this event, however, 80,000 estimated residents were affected. In November 2006, after the volcanic eruption, Typhoon Durian struck Albay and caused flooding and lahar flows. It claimed the lives of over 1,100 and led to the temporary displacement of a million people. Three years after, in December 2009, Mayon generated a lahar that led to the evacuation of 112,000 people within the designated 6-kilometer radius danger zone around the volcano's summit. In May 2013, Mayon stood out 
Ash, Blast which killed Vibe and injured Seven, all of whom were recreational climbers. Its last hazardous eruption was in September 2014, which led to the evacuation of up to 12,000 residents within an 8-kilometer radius of the volcano's craters. All in all, as I said a while ago, Mayon has erupted 50 times in the last 500 years. So now, let's move on to the hazards associated in Mount Mayon. Several hazards are posed in relation to the volcanic eruptions. In the case of Mayon, 86 barangay within the six municipalities and three cities of Albay were at risk from the following hazards. Pyroclastic flow, ashfall, volcanic eruption, lava flow, mud flow, earthquakes, and airfall tepra. The most affected are the barangays located within and the 6-kilometer radius permanent danger zone or PDZ, PDZ and the 8-kilometer radius extended danger zones. And for the last part is institutionalizing disaster risk reduction and management. Albay is situated in southeastern Luzon through which tropical storm typhoons frequently passes during the country's rainy season. Because of this geographic location, the province experiences more, more inescapable and prominent rain or tropical depression and no notable dry seasons all year round. In a study conducted by the Human Development Network on the geography and public planning in the province, it describes how vulnerable Albay is not only to hazard posed by Mount Mayon's volcanic eruptions, but also by stor storm surges, typhoons, and floods. Each year, roughly 193,000 houses are threatened with destruction from storm surges, and at least 350,000 people need to be evacuated. As such, it is considered to be done of the next disaster-prone provinces in the country. Countermeasure plans must take all of these effects into consideration. Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or PVOX, has established, established five alert level warnings corresponding to these levels. The Albay Province Disaster Coordinating Council, or PDCC, through the Provincial Public Safety and Emergency Management Office, or PPSMO, PPSEMO, devised preparedness and mitigation measures and action plans. The institutionalization of the Albay PPSEMO facilitates the implementation of disaster management initiatives described below. This resulted in zero casualties during the super typhoons in 1995 and 1998 and two consecutive eruptions of Mayan volcano in 2000 and 2001. Institutionalization of the former Provincial Disaster Management Office or PDMO to become PPSEMO was completed in 2000. Disaster preparedness, prevention, and mitigation are now included in the annual provincial budget appropriations. Emergency, emergency research plays a critical role in contingency planning with significant outputs of risk and resource maps, population at risk data, and information about critical resources. Public awareness and information campaigns have been conducted by PPSEMO and PVOX through information caravans which have increased awareness of risk and threats. Coordination between and among stakeholders has been established and a working relationship between PVOX and PDCC is being maintained. Evacuation, transportation, relief, communication, information and media relations, search rescue and recovery, psychosocial care, health and sanitation, fire suppression, and the like are all institutionalized. So that's all for this part of the lesson. And now we were having an activity. Be ready with your notebook and pen and let us check if you have learned and earned knowledge about Mayon Volcano. This activity is entitled, Pool of Blazing Fire. Direction. Read the paragraph and identify the correct words that fit in the given sentences in the word pool below. Write only the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheet. So here are the words in the Pool of Blazing Fire. A. Vulcanian B. 50 C. Kagsawa Church D. Mayon Volcano 
E. Strombolian F. Albay G. September 2014 H. Typhoon Durian I. Linian and letter J. Mount Mayon Number 1 It is classified as a composite volcano and is considered as the most active volcano in the Philippines. The correct answer is letter D, Mayon Volcano. Number 2, an intense explosion with sudden release of gases. The correct answer is letter A, Vulcanian. Number 3, a quiet emission of lava. The correct answer is letter E, Strombolian. Number 4, an extremely intense explosion. The correct answer is letter I, Plinian. Number 5, the Mayon buried blank in ash leaving its bell tower protruding above ground. The correct answer is letter C, Kagsawa Church. Number 6, Mayon has already erupted blank times in the last 500 years. The correct answer is letter B, 50. Number 7, in November 2006, after the volcanic eruption, what struck Albay and caused flooding and lahar flows? The correct answer is letter H, Typhoon Dorian. Number 8, the last hazardous eruption was blank. Correct answer is letter G. September 2014 Number 9 Blanc, situated in southeastern Luzon through which tropical storm typhoons frequently passes during the country's rainy season. The correct answer is letter F, Albay. And last, number 10, the other term for Mayon Volcano. answer is letter J, Mount Mayon. Did you get all the correct answers? Well done, STEM 12! If not, that's okay, you did your best. Besides Mayon Volcano, Mount Pinatubo also had destructive eruptions in the past. Here's Miss Frances Lecaros to discuss about Mount Pinatubo. I am Frances Lariva Lecaros and I will be discuss Mount Pinatubo. Mount Pinatubo is a composite volcano nestled in the central island of Luzon, adjacent to the provinces of Pampanga, Torlac, and Zambales. Mount Pinatubo had its powerful eruption in June 1991. It ejected high-magnitude magma, massive mud flows, and giant ash clouds. The monsoon rains aggravated mud flows that claims 300 people's lives and a million displaced. Its eruptive history was unknown to the most before the pre-eruption volcanic activity of early 1991. When did the last eruption of Mount Pinatubo happen? Mount Pinatubo is stratovolcano in the Philippines, June 15, 1991. It erupted, resulting in the second largest eruption of the 20th century. The eruption caused 700 million in damage, 100 million of which was damaged to 16 aircraft flying at the time of the eruption and 250 million in property with a rest combination of agriculture, forestry, and land. 
History of Eruption, April 2, 1991. First rumbling after 450 years. Small amount of ash thrown up to 800 meters in the air. For next month, small tremors were recorded in the volcano. June 3, 1991. Pinatubo ejects ash which lasts for 30 minutes, up to 2,000 weeks a day. Some suggesting that the magma was getting near the surface. Sunday, June 9, 1991. Ash and steam ejected from the volcano for 8 hours. Pyroclastic flows reached 5 km from the crater. Wednesday, June 12, 1991. At 8.51 a.m., three major explosions sent a mushroom-shaped cloud over 20 km into the air. Ash, pumice, and other fragments were ejected. Rivers overflowed due to pyroclastic flows. Around midnight, more explosions sent ash 25 km into the atmosphere. Thursday, June 13, 1991. Another violent eruption created further ash falls covering three settlements. Winds carried the ash hundreds of kilometers in all directions. Friday, June 14, 1991. The fourth major eruption happened at 1.09 p.m. Ash 125 km above the bend. At 3.30 p.m., a much bigger eruption sent a cauliflower-shaped cloud of volcanic debris 30 km into the air. Major pyroclastic flows reached per 15 km from the volcano. Smaller eruption at 6.35 p.m., 10.18 p.m., and 11.21 p.m. Saturday, June 15, 1991. Two eruptions occurred at town which caused a pyroclastic flows, traveling at 80 km per hour. Seven more eruptions caused an ash cloud 18 km wide and 25 km high. Pyroclastic flows reached 16 km from the volcano. At 10.27 a.m., a violent eruption first debris up to 40 km into the air. Five similar eruptions quickly followed over 19 eruptions during the day. Effects of eruption up to 12 km of rock and ash were blasted into the atmosphere. Here's the picture of the before and after eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Happenings during Mount Pinatubo Volcanic Activity What truly happened during the devastating effect of Mount Pinatubo eruption? 847 people killed, 184 injured, 23 missing presumed dead, 1.18 million people affected. Houses and public buildings collapsed from weight of ash deposits. 650,000 workers forced out of work due to destruction of farms, shops, and factories. America had to evacuate their aircraft, air force base. Volcanic dust blanketed towns. Public buildings had to be used for evacuation centers to accommodate refugees from devastated R. Early Warning and Disaster Management The experts, local government, and communities widely acknowledge that if early warning can be given during an impending disaster, the severity of the resulting disaster or adverse consequences can be reduced. The 1991 eruption provided an example of how accurate forecasting and timely warning saved lives from the hazards of violent eruptions. 
the number of casualties was relatively small despite violent explosions. Now let us have a short activity to see what you learn about the topic. Activity 1, Test 1. Read, understand, and answer the questions. Statements below. Write the letter of your best answer on your answer sheet. Test 2. Write T if the statement is true. Write F if the statement is false.